A, a podcast. podcast. A cast of podding. A podcast. A pod racer. Mm. I'm the best pod racer, Padme. <laughs> please, <laughs> please don't have sex with me in a few years. <laughs> It'll make me evil. They did the horrible things to my mother. Um, <laughs> well, you know, why didn't we see Anakin become an evil? <laughs> yeah. Uh, you were supposed to bring the. You, know, you were supposed to bring order, Anakin. Smash you were supposed to be the best of us. <laughs> Don't be foolish. I have the high ground. <laughs> 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 I think I could do a whole episode of just like <laughs> being Cobra Commander. Yeah. <laughs> just like just like random stuff. <laughs> but I feel like a Skeletor. I feel like in my yeah, mind it's... there's a fine line between Cobra Commander and Skeletor. Skeletor, yeah. <laughs> Have you seen any of those the, I think there was a tick I think TikTok is where I first saw it. I saw some like just regular memes, just the text memes with image on like Twitter and stuff. But the actual person doing their their Skeletor voice, and it's like, oh, I, I, let me see if I can let me see if I can find one to to do it to do it justice. Skeletor meme. Um. <laughs> so it's like it's like <laughs> okay, here's one. 2050 is closer than 1990. And then, like, Skeletor takes off. It's like takes the, off running the away. video yeah. of Skeletor take off running. Skeletor, see you next time. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I just, there's something about that. <laughs> when you make a joke and someone says to you, that's not very nice. I am not nice. <laughs> <laughs> uh, welcome to Rage You Nerds. I'm Mr. Cack. That's my brother, Jared. We're the Super Kegel Bros, and we're here to talk some nerd and geeky stuff. And maybe make Skeletor voices. I don't yes, want you, you, really... <laughs> you never know. <laughs> <laughs> Punishable by fine really just means legal for a price. Until we meet again! <laughs> Those really which, are good memes. Which, which, that one, that one, that one's, hey, societal. That's, yeah, hey, that's yeah, philosophic right there. Like, Skeletor's onto something. He's not wrong. He's not wrong. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm just looking at Skeletor memes. <laughs> <laughs> On tonight's then, episode of Rage You Nerds, Mr. <laughs> Cack laughs at Skeletor memes. Don't share. I don't share with anyone. No one else. Yeah, you just... Sorry, there's, <laughs> there's just one on Pinterest that says, Skeletor is displeased with your shit. <laughs> <laughs> uh, we're three minutes we... in. Good. So I can say I can say that word. Uh, all right. So what I actually wanted to talk about. And I think that you would enjoy it because I think I'm going to enjoy it because I think that there's not a lot to go on. But June 8th, yesterday, or, you know, Times Abstract, whenever you're actually watching this, because I'll probably release it next week. But June 8th is Ghostbuster Day. Mm -hmm. Ghostbusters, the original 1984 movie, was released June 8th. Uh, so this is the celebration of that movie being released. On that day, typically, especially if there's something Ghostbusters related, when Ghostbusters Afterlife was getting paired up, they would drop some teasers and stuff like that for that. We have a Ghostbusters film. It is codenamed Firehouse. I don't believe that that's going to be the actual title for it, but because they haven't announced anything else, that's just seemingly what is only being used for everything. Right. But on, to, on this Ghostbusters day, there were two kind of big reveals. One was relatively small. It was McKenna Grace... Um, dancing to a TikTok that she made um, on the set. So starting in the firehouse, we see Ecto, and then she runs out, and we see the staging studio with a lot of green screen for the setup neighborhood. So it means they're going to be using some shots that actually take place around the firehouse. Uh, I mean, seemingly they have like a whole neighborhood with the green screen so they can CGI in the rest of New York skyline. Um, so that was interesting. But then there was this. And let me find it. There was this image dropped as a teaser for the logo. Again, the film is codenamed Firehouse. 
We know that it's taking place some over in the United Kingdom because they were filming there originally. And then some of it will be set in New York because McKenna Grace has already let the cat out of the bag that they are going to be at the firehouse. She is wearing a Ghostbusters flight suit, which I think is awesome. And Ecto is visible in her video. But this image of the Ghostbuster logo frozen over. So, Jared, my brother, I feel like there's some rampant speculation that we can go with from just this icy image alone and nothing else. Uh, so, would you like to spin out of control as we try to theory craft and guess our way to what the plot of Ghostbusters Afterlife sequel could possibly be and how it relates to ice? I'm trying to think of when ice gets involved in Ghostbusters somehow and I'm trying to rack my brain over it and I know the answer is like really obvious but I feel like I need to have a refresher see I I mean someone has pointed that the Ghostbusters uh, comic book series um, that's pretty popular uh, has a villain that is a like an ice demon or ice apparition. I'm not too versed in the comic book. I know the comic book has built their own team, has fed into the original team, has incorporated the answer to the call team, has incorporated some of the extreme Ghostbusters team. The comic book from uh, IW Comic ID, what is it? IDW Comics, I think is what it is. They've incorporated a lot of Ghostbusters lore from the cartoons, from the movies, and then building their own lore itself. Where I kind of, well, first, before we get to where my mind was going, uh, someone I was reading, as I do, comment sections, and from this, someone said, hey, you know, this is coming out in December, you know, and someone asked the same question you did. Is there any connection to ice or winter that we're missing? And someone's like, well, you know, they have fought someone in a wintry time, and that's when they captured the Christmas, the ghost of Christmas past, future, and present. Oh, okay. Yeah, that's <laughs> and, true. And uh, wouldn't it be awesome if Ghostbusters just suddenly made a very Christmas themed <laughs> <laughs> movie <laughs> without like ever, ever hinting to it? It just becomes a thing. It's like, well, okay. <laughs> uh, clearly, it's not going to be that. <laughs> clearly, yeah. it's not going to be that. Where my mind goes, and I'm curious to know what you think of this, is we. I mean, maybe maybe you remember this. I know at one point we talked about it a little bit. But in the past, Ghostbusters 2, Dan Aykroyd's original idea was them going to hell. Yes. And I don't know. When I saw this, I thought, huh, hell freezing over. What if there is a possibility that we go back to the well of Dan Aykroyd wanting to really get the Ghostbusters down into the ninth circle of hell, uh, where in uh, Dante's Inferno, the frozen body of Lucifer is just kind of chilling. <laughs> uh, uh, I, I mean, it feels it feels kind of dangerous to tackle religious yeah. concepts uh, in your movies, uh, but at the same time, I would be fine with it. I, I'm all about the the uh, iconic, you know, the iconic, you know, the just the symbolism and the uh the visual representation of you know demons and all that stuff i think all that stuff's fun i mean technically vigo looked very devilly in his like final form in the in the painting yeah uh, anyways when he's i am lord vigo <laughs> yeah uh but what do you think do you think uh ghostbusters going to hell could be a premise that we try to get back into I don't know if it if he would go if they would go that far uh, because again I think they're gonna you know with Ghostbusters I think they're gonna try to keep it lighthearted but maybe to stick with that theme that it's not hell per se as a hell where they you know they follow something in um, you know s somehow somewhere or there's a hell on earth kind of scenario released that they have to fight back and um you know that that could be the theme that like hell freezing over is like we fought back the gates of hell and they tom petted it He's, they stood up at the gates of hell and they never backed down ghostbusters um mm -hmm. i don't but i just i don't i don't 
well, I say I don't see it, but it wouldn't surprise me if it happened kind of deal. Yeah. Um, but I don't see that as the way that they're necessarily going. Although I feel like maybe some aspects of what you said could be incorporated into that to, to make it kind of work that way without it actually, um, without it actually being that. Yeah. I just, um, I think it's very interesting that, that it's not just some comments. It's bloody disgusting who usually is a pretty good source of covering all the horror related topics in the world with their website and the articles that they pump out has also kind of theorized. What if this is a Christmas movie? Which would be so fascinating. Yeah, really Because would. then there's the juxtaposition of the conversation about Ghostbusters 2 and is that a Christmas movie? We've actually had the conversation ourselves with me, you, and TJ. Mm -hmm. uh, because at one point during the montage sequence, they are wearing Christmas. Or they're wearing the, the Santa hat type things. But the reality is it culminates with the whole New Year's Eve type thing and the transition to 1990 was kind of a big thing so to me it always felt more like a new year's a new Eve year's movie yeah then um necessarily a christmas movie but granted the way that those two holidays work out they are they're a week apart uh, yeah. just just thanks they're to how intertwined. numbers just thanks to how numbers work out yeah. in that regard <laughs> uh so it is one of those things where like i mean it is a december release for the movie it wouldn't be weird I mean, it's, you're capitalizing on when the audience is going to be there. Uh, do you want to see a Christmas movie with ghost? <laughs> Not them kind of ghost, the spooky kind. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I think I think for me, I'm more excited about McKenna Grace wearing a flight suit. Yeah. I think that was kind of some questions we had when we were processing our thoughts of Ghostbusters Afterlife and wanting to see the younger gen. And really, it's just McKenna Grace's Phoebe. I could yeah. care less if Finn Wolfhard and whatever his character's name was becomes yeah. a Ghostbuster. But really, Phoebe, uh, Paul Rudd's character, uh, whatever, Mr. 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 Gruber, Goober, like yeah, he, he had a bad name. <laughs> he had a bad name. A Gru bad name. Gruberson, Gruberson, I think was his name. Gruberson, uh, yeah. But uh, Paul Rudd's character, you know, Carrie Coon, if she wants to, sure, why not become a Ghostbuster? But really, McKenna Grace and Paul Rudd, those yeah. are the two things I want. Pair them up with Dan Aykroyd, Ernie Hudson. I would love to see Bill there, but I understand that Bill's kind of just getting tired of that crap. And, you know, I, I'm not yeah. here to blame him for that. Uh, but, yeah, no, I, I I would love to see – I just want to see that. I just want to see McKenna Grace as a Ghostbuster. Yeah, that'd be cool. Uh, and I, I'm glad we're going back to New York. Mm -hmm. Granted, there's no idea how long we'll be in New York – I know they did some filming in the United Kingdom, but also so did Batman, and all of that filming was to give them the iconic, you know, the landscape shots for yeah. Gotham. So, I mean, this could be doing the same thing. It could be going over to Europe to do the shots, but realistically, they are shooting New York. Yeah. So it could very well still just be a New York centric thing. And I think that that's good. I think the more New York that Ghostbusters is, the better it is for Ghostbusters. Yeah. It's really a New York movie. Yep. Agreed. Uh, let's see. Have you seen the McKenna Grace little. TikTok? I have not. Let me see if I can find that. We can watch that right quick. Cause again, I just like it because you get a, you get a quick snapshot of, uh, what's going on with uh some of the scenery that and she's absolutely fantastic <sighs> she is i hope i hope she becomes a huge star i know she's in a lot of stuff and you know it keeps growing but i hope that she doesn't just get forgotten in the annals of time because we keep going back to the emma stone or jennifer lawrence well yeah eventually they're gonna age out of stuff y'all let mckenna yeah. grace shine um, <laughs> we'll do a two-way breakdown. Is that going to be good enough for you? I know. It's yeah, small. I can work with that. All right, here we go. McKenna Grace. Let me, because the music isn't too important for what I want from this.
So, right quick. That's cool. Let's go back to this. Also, right quick, because, you know, at this point, she's wearing a suit that actually fits her much better because she's not just wearing an old Egon yeah. uh, flight jacket. She's wearing, I believe that says Spangler, right? Yeah, well, I can't, I can't see it. I can't tell. I'm assuming it says Spangler, and for those that watch Ghostbusters Afterlife, you know that she wasn't necessarily a Spangler. Uh, they, they didn't really talk about their last name a whole lot, and it was the family coming into acknowledging their grandfather and the association with the Ghostbusters. I, I, you know, I love everything about it. I hope this little Spangler does all the good things. Yes. But also, Egon Spangler, the locker right there, E Spangler. So that's that's awesome. Yeah. Uh, it either means that the Ghostbusters themselves, which would be uh, Winston Zedmore, who's still you know keeping up with the firehouse. Uh, this is them moving in and trying to clean up and, and bring back the firehouse glory. Or Winston's maintained it and he's keeping Egon's locker as kind of a tribute to yeah. his fallen friend. Either way, awesome. Now, what I want to see... Let me see if I can slow it down. Oh, I can. Let me see if... Well, like only 75. That's not too slow. Okay, so Zedmore is next to Egon. I saw the more. Do we get any more? No. Is it just them two? So it looks like uh, it looks, looks like, like it cuts off and then there's a third one that comes up. But let's backtrack a little bit more. Let's see if we can see anything in the firehouse behind McKenna. So we see Janine's desk. Yeah. Anything else that really sticks out? Oh, there's a whole set of lockers there's a whole right set there. Of lockers there, yeah. Yeah. Okay. So there's like six lockers. <laughs> you can kind of see the cameraman in the reflection of the yeah. of the Hearst. <laughs> um, anything from the outside shot? Not really. That's a big sound stage. So. Yeah, I was, I was more interested if anything on the papers stood out. Vice Apex, that probably could or couldn't be nothing. I mean, it's got four things of Vice Apex, September 16th. So is Vice, is that something? I know you can't see it. I'm sorry. I'm <laughs> playing Detective Inspector Gadget over here and you can't even see nothing. Oh, whoa. Where did, okay, hey. Now oh. I'm even lost. <laughs> now I'm upset. Did you hear that? Bears. Um, all right, so let's let's put this down. Let's see. Vice Apex. Vice Apex. Is this just is this just a, a nice nod uh, from Jason Reitman to a band or something that he knows? No, it's something. It's something for the show. So there has to be something to that, right? Why include that as a background thing? September. 16th why have that why have that vice apex so there's nothing about that so that's something that they just it could be nothing right it could be nothing yeah. i could be spinning my wheels for nothing so i'm gonna stop but i was hoping maybe there was something there that we could dig into and and see like what all is going on is there any any secret ghostbuster stuff that we can glean from this and get an advantage no the answer is no <laughs> well i say that let's see if uh people in comments have torn into this at all um are you guys making a new ghostbusters movie <laughs> <laughs> hey, all right <laughs> uh there's a ghostbusters day that's santa santa said that santa uh, iconic uh, they're making another Ghostbusters movie. How many people didn't know they were making another Ghostbusters movie? What Gosh, I don't know, but I feel, I feel like everybody knew. Uh, imagine Bill Murray doing this, to which McKenna Grace responded, Oh, the TikTok's sitting in my drafts right now with a praying emoji. Uh, I appreciate that McKenna Grace has been yeah. accepted by the original Ghostbusters, and she seems to be having a lot of fun with it. Mm -hmm. Uh that's awesome. I hope I hope that she I hope that one I hope people I hope the the sequel's good. I hope people 
take to it. I hope that there is a continue building upon the love for it that Ghostbusters Afterlife received. What I really hope, though, is that McKenna Grace enjoys this enough that she'll want to do a couple more Ghostbuster movies as a growing and developing Phoebe. Because I think that that would be the best for the franchise is to have a young star that would like to do a couple more movies, a la a Tom Holland of Spider-Man franchise. Yeah. Because there's a lot you can do there. There's a lot you can do there with someone. Because not only could it be a story about the ghost and the busting of them, but also McKenna Grace growing up before our eyes as Phoebe. We've seen her as this young, really awkward child that had a fascination with telling jokes <laughs> to get through like weird situations. Yeah. <laughs> and then whatever happens to her in the second one, and then if there's a third one, seeing her now as more of a, a young adult and kind of how she now is is either different or similar to our expectations from how we saw her in the first movie, how much of Egon is truly shining through her. Um, there's so many, there's so many like, gut punchy like really good wholesome things they could do with this and i hope jason reitman does yeah yeah it could go a lot of different ways i'm i'm just i'm ready for it i am too i am too uh <laughs> and hopefully we'll get some clarity again this movie's coming out in december of this year so hopefully you know within the next few months we get the first sign of a trailer but i know they're still shooting it <laughs> i know i know that they're still in production for this so Maybe I don't know how movies are made. <laughs> you know who's also celebrating another year anniversary? Who's that? Hold on. And go. And go. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park. Jurassic Park is celebrating its 30th anniversary, uh, which is awesome because recently there is a nature article that talks about a virgin crocodile birth. <laughs> That's right, oh. a crocodile who had not been, and how anyone knows, how anyone knows that this croc <laughs> did not get get got. Um, but she laid eggs, and one of them happened to be fertilized somehow. Somehow a baby hatched out of this egg. Uh, I don't know if crocodiles are like chickens, and they just will lay eggs regardless of the, whether whether <laughs> they've been impregnated or not. Uh, but apparently there's been a virgin birth in, in the croc land. So the crocodiles now have their Jesus figure. Congratulations to the crocodile. <laughs> Good job, uh, Crocs. And I didn't think anything about it until the sports show I was listening to on the radio home from work was like, you know, but isn't that the plot of Jurassic Park? And it's like, son of a bitch, it is, it right? Is. <laughs> they, they were all, all of the clone replicant dinosaurs were, were 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 made as females they were they yep. were genetically altered to be females and then all of a sudden they started impregnating themselves because they were like gender swapping within and life finds a way life finds life finds a way <laughs> you you crazy sons of bitches uh um, sons of bitches that's a big that's a big piece of shit <laughs> that's a big pile of shit um so, yeah, like, hey, kudos to not only life finding a way to fit the 30th anniversary, but kudos to Jurassic Park for turning 30. Uh, we recently watched Transformers Beast Wars, and one of our comments was, you know, honestly, for as wonky as the CGI was, like, it wasn't bad. It was like, yeah. it held up. And I know Jurassic Park looks differently on the super high-definition TVs. On my 4K TV just watching the regular version of Jurassic Park with no mastering or redoing of it, it's going to look a bit janky. It's mm -hmm. going to look a little bit out of place. But the reality is the CGI in that has really still held up. Yeah. And at the time when that movie came out, it melted my mind of just how lifelike things looked from my vantage point as admittedly a dumb kid. I it's I think it still holds up. I think it still looks great. I I I do we need more Jurassic Park movies? Probably. No, I don't know. I think we I mean we just it. had Jura we just had the Jurassic World stuff and it felt like it kind of went out on a whimper there, which to be fair, the first Jurassic Park trilogy kind of went out on a whimper too. Yeah. Um Lost World was all right, but then whatever whatever the third one was you know, I can't even remember the plot of it, honestly. I, I it wasn't good. Yeah. Um. Hey, speaking of 
rebooting or building upon or continuing a franchise. Leprechaun, Leprechaun franchise. They've getting, <sighs> they've got the green light to reboot the franchise and make a new movie. I think this will be what the one we should leave alone. This will be what the fourth reboot in the last six years. <laughs> I don't know if they've rebooted or they just kept doing Leprechaun in the Hood sequels. So they did reboot it though because Hornsw uh, was it Hornswoggle? Yeah, oh, that's right. W that's because right. WWE yep. got their hands on on yep. the on the IP and they're like, "We'll make one Hornswoggle." <laughs> yep, that's right. I forgot about that. <laughs> oh man, uh, I'm uh, congratulations, Jurassic Park. You na 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 <laughs> na 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 na. Just how excited he was to see the brontosaurus eating leaves. Yeah. I, I wish I could find happiness like that in my life. That's, yeah, Dr. Grant was pretty happy in that moment. <laughs> uh, Jared, you got any final words for the good nerds out there? Stay safe and don't do black tar heroin. No, no, no. No, no, no. Or, or go, Joe. Go, Joe. Hey, check out our videos. We're doing a string of episode watch alongs with some of our favorite 80s and 90s cartoons. Yes. Uh, out there right now is for sure Transformers Beast Wars. We've got G.I. Joes in the future or currently, again, time has no true meaning. Uh, Teenage <laughs> Mutant Ninja Turtles, the original 80s uh, series will be dropping as well, along with our favorite, the real Ghostbusters. If you enjoyed any of these classic cartoons, make sure to check out that series. Check out the rest of this podcast. We've got more episodes other than this. Uh, there's going to be boxes appearing above and around our faces and stuff. Uh, click on them. Check out our stuff. Like the video. Subscribe. Be a nerd. Tell a nerd. Become a nerd. Join our channel. Join our subreddit. Join our family? I don't know. This is the Kegel Bros, and we're out of here. Good night. Oh, my God. Hashtag my... nerd kingdom. Oh, we should do a hashtag. <laughs> we should we should do a hashtag. We should do a hashtag. <laughs> I just became Owen Wilson. <laughs> we should do wow, a hashtag. A hashtag. <laughs> <laughs>